My housemate dropped her Pixel 6 in water. It slipped off the top of the toilet and into a bucket, so it could have been worse. Even though it was only in the water for a few seconds, she noticed the touchscreen not working in some areas. Let's open it up and have a look. I soon realised that the glass and bezel are separating. I don't think this is the best tool for this particular phone. But I'm also surprised that the bezel was coming away so easily. This bracket's not coming up. Maybe I need to take this screw out first. There's no immediate sign of any water inside. I'll take off this display shielding and see if there's any under here. This smaller flex cable is for the digitizer. What may look like water is just glue protecting the chips. They all look fine with no trace of moisture. The placement on these is a bit sloppy though. Maybe Google could get some tips from today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay are the premium choice of circuit board manufacturing no matter how big or small the client is. Working with the giants in the tech and engineering industry yet still offer 10 PCBs for only $5 to average smos like me. $5? No way! Yes way. PCB way. Ooh, yippee ki -yay. They also have many other fabrication services, so check the link in the description and see what they can do for you. This phone is less than 18 months old and hasn't had any impact damage before. I'm thinking that this bezel was already compromised and that's how water got in. The glue is not sticky, it's a dry heat pressed adhesive, which sometimes ages poorly and comes apart quite easily. Now I've got the bezel off, I'll stick some paper in near the digitizer flex and see if it wicks up any moisture. Nope.
I'll give the screen components a good clean with alcohol and on a bead down under where the flex cables join the display. Okay, let's see if there's any water in the rest of the phone. There's two more T4 screws under the mid plate. All the screws are the same, except for the black screw near the screen connection. This looks poorly designed. I'm struggling to get the motherboard out, as the battery cable is obstructing it slightly. and still we find no trace of water. No water coming out of the speaker. I'll give the USB port a clean with alcohol to remove any aquatic impurities. Alright, I guess I'll put this dry as a bone phone back together after finding no water. At least all the parts got to get out and stretch their legs. I feel like I'm going to damage the battery ribbon cable trying to squeeze this board in. This is such a stupid design. I'm going to have to remove the battery just in case. Wait, come back! This battery pull tab confuses me, so I'll use some isopropyl alcohol to soften the adhesive. Oh wait, I get it. You're supposed to use this pull tab like a saw. Okay, maybe not. My saw is starting to tear. I'll just hit it with some more alcohol and brute force. Okay, I'm starting to regret removing the battery. I should have just risked it. It's not like she's my favourite housemate. Okay, let's test it. Did cleaning the screen fix the touch issue? No, it did not. It's gotten worse. And of course, now I can't turn the phone off or disconnect the battery before unplugging the screen. What I'll do is I'll force restart the phone and then unplug the screen at the speed of light before it turns on again.
I made one last attempt and really doused it with alcohol, but it didn't change anything. I'm thinking that only a tiny bit of water got into the screen and shorted out something. I'll pick up a genuine replacement screen from iFixit. What the, $10 for adhesive? The screen is 198 but for $13 more, you get the adhesive plus a toolkit, so it's a no-brainer. The instructions state to remove the screen protector and not to touch the screen while it's booting up. It also comes with a new fingerprint reader installed. Alright, that's working perfectly. I was slightly concerned that maybe the touch I see on the motherboard had been shorted. I'll clean the frame thoroughly with alcohol and install the $10 adhesive. I'll heat up the phone and clamp it down for 30 minutes. Last thing to do is calibrate the new fingerprint sensor using Google's calibration tool. I need to hold down the power button and volume down to boot into fast mode. Even with the proper driver installed, the Pixel 6 wasn't recognized in fast mode. I discovered that I needed to install the driver again whilst the phone was in fast mode. Now it shows up. Success. So catch me if I fall.